Hello, 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 everybody. <coughs> Welcome to my studio today. <coughs> I am like a frog in my throat today. Not sure what's going on. Oh my gosh. I hope you guys are having a great day. Oh, Donna, I'm sorry to hear you have the winter blahs. I, I get it. <laughs> I get it. So maybe, maybe we can cheer you up today. Um, we are having beautiful weather here today. We had beautiful weather yesterday, nice and sunny, and we got up to 60, and today 65, but it's a little windy. Um, I am freezing to death. I cannot get warm. The last couple of days, I could not get warm for anything. So, if it's not too windy, I plan on going outside for a walk after all this is done. So, I hope you guys are having a good one. Um, let's see, I want to announce a couple of things before we get started here. One is that the OKC Painting Palooza has gone live for registrations. So head over there and get registered for all your classes. I have three this year. Um, be sure and uh, get in the classes that you want because they do fill up very, very quickly. And you don't want to miss out. And um, I've got three. So OKCPaintingPalooza.com. You can see the flip book there and see all the classes. You know, the pictures never do the projects justice, just so you know. Just so you know. But um, <clears throat> it's always a fun time. It's a great, great fun convention. So um, be sure and head over there and, and sign up. Um, the other announcement that I want to make is on my lives, I'm going to start doing some giveaways. So, in order to be entered in my giveaway, you need to comment um, on either my live or my Facebook feed, whichever one you're watching it on. Uh, you need to like and uh, you need to share. So, I have some really great stuff coming up for giveaways. Um, this one for today will be some paintbrushes from Dynasty. Maybe a couple little goodies thrown in from me. So. Um, <clears throat> be sure and uh, do that. I will take everyone that has um, done what I just asked <laughs> and uh, I will um, put you on a little wheel, <laughs> spin it around, you know, one of those wheels you can get on in the internet and spin it around and uh, find me a winner and then I will contact you and let you know that you've won so I can get your information. But uh, uh, that is something I have been uh, planning to do for a while and the brushes that I'm going to be giving away today are Dynasty brushes and they have been donated by Dynasty so when you get your winnings be sure and tag me and Dynasty brush and tell Dynasty brush thank you for uh, being such a gener generous uh, contributor. They support artists so wonderfully. I just love this company. I love being a brush specialist and um, so appreciative. So <coughs> Excuse me, man, I really have a horrible frog in my throat today, so. Donna, you're cold all the time. Yeah. It is, um, that's been me the last couple days. I couldn't get warm at all yesterday. I had like three layers of clothes on. It was ridiculous. All right, are you guys ready to do some letters? Let's get, I've got a lot of stuff to show you today. Um, and uh, lots of different things that you can do, and it's going to be a fun one. Well, probably a little bit longer than last week, but uh, we will get it all done. Get me up here in the corner here. And, of course, we're doing our art letters here. Now, in the description, not only on Facebook, but on YouTube, lists every single thing that I use to create these. Um... The letters, I gave a link for Walmart and Amazon. Uh, the link for Amazon shows all different kinds of letters. Um, they do have this uh, font of letter, and Walmart has this font, not as big as this. Uh, the ones from Walmart are an uh, inch and a half smaller, but they work just fine. Depends on how much space you have in your your art room anyway, or wherever you're going to put them. Uh, so... Um, you can use whatever style font of letters that you want. They can even be paper mache letters. They don't have to be this particular font, okay? And then I just wanted to bring back in my old letters that I did many years ago. You can do them as simple as this. This is simple, simple, simple. Simple. 
I mean, these uh, flowers are not my design, so but I just showed you I took the, the A and traced it on here and then drew me some roses on there. You can get uh, free images, color book images that you could use on here. Uh, on my T, I drew me a tulip, but uh, you could you could get some images online if you want to do that, or if you have a favorite uh, artist that you like to use, um, they have some flowers that you want to use. You can do that as well, or create your own. I encourage you to create your own. Okay, but today we're going to be doing stamping, so we're not going to be uh, doing drawing. Uh, flowers and stuff on ours. I just wanted to bring my old ones in to show you, you know, what you can do to create them. Okay, so because there's a lot of steps that we have to go through to get these letters, um, I'm going to move these out of the way and bring in the ones that I'm going to be working on. I'll put them here in front of me so hopefully I can duplicate them. <laughs> And also I wanted to say thank you to everyone who uh, ordered mystery boxes from me. They sold so quickly. So now I'm working on getting some more made up. So if you missed out on the mystery box, um, it's, it's, uh, I'm going to be doing some more. Okay, so I've already got these two done. Uh, I just want to tell you how I got uh, the backs and everything ready. So the backs of these are, first I applied multi-purpose sealer with a damp sponge. I highly recommend that you never ever miss doing this step. Some kind of sealer on your surface, especially if it's wood, um, because this is going to keep the paint from soaking into the wood, but it's also going to create um, uh, a way for the paint to stick to the wood so it pre you know it seals the wood prevents the paint from sticking in it prevents the paint from soaking into the wood and it makes the paint stick which is an important thing especially if you ever want to tape off on your project you don't want the paint lifting if you pull the tape off so multi-purpose sealer I don't generally use it on canvases um, canvases I just tend to paint a couple of coats of white paint because um, Canvases are not primed well when you get them. They um, they just don't have a high quality whatever they've got on them, whether it's paint or gesso. It's not top notch. So if you do want to paint something with a white background, if you don't paint over it, um, that background could yellow or brown over the years, and uh, then your painting would be ruined. So. Uh, even a, a canvas needs to be painted. And I took the same sponge, I, I didn't wash it out, and applied two coats of black paint on here. And then uh, I did lightly sand uh, between my multi-purpose sealer and my paint, um, just with a brown paper bag. You don't have to have anything fancy. And then I applied uh, two coats of matte varnish on my black paint. So the back is completely done. If we accidentally get paint or glue on the back, it's going to come right off. So. Um, that's a tip right there for you. So I've got this one done here. And um, oh, I'm missing one of my papers. Oh, no. Well, I'll have to draw it out, I guess, unless it got underneath something somewhere. Anyway, I needed to have three pieces of paper here. <laughs> I've been moving this stuff around all day. So who knows where it's at. Another piece like this. My papers came from Hobby Lobby. Let me see if I've got it in here. Um, my papers came from Hobby Lobby, and I just got them oh, maybe two weeks ago. I'll bring them in here and show them to you. So this one um, looks like this. I love this one. This one's just a mottled gray. I did kind of a light gray on all of them, and then this one's a wood grain. They can all be the same. Do not have to be different like I am doing here, so don't feel like you have to make different ones. I'm going to keep this one out because I'm going to obviously have to cut a piece. And then um, my A has this particular paper, and then my B. And my T is this color. Yes, I know this one's green. But it started out as blue. <laughs> Just so you know. It started out as blue. And we will get it to green. I promise. I promise. So whatever colors of papers that you want to use, it's all good. It's all good. Okay. 
So, to get your paper cut for your letter, I just traced it onto my paper. Get a piece of paper here. Put it all away. Okay, so I take it and lay it on my paper, on the, the back side of the paper. Now the T, it doesn't matter which direction the T goes. The A and the R, you always want to make sure that the front is down. So if you've painted your back, it's going to be easy to remember which side is the front. So your letter goes down. Okay. So I will line up generally one of the straight edges on here and take my pencil and trace around my letter all the way around it okay hopefully I got all my lines on here so I should have a nice letter T here okay so to cut it out, you can just cut it out with some scissors, but I like for my lines to be really, really straight. So I will get my self-healing mat here, and I will lay it on here, and all of my straight cuts, I will put my ruler on here and cut them. Now when you're cutting your letters out, to keep from having to trim them later, you want to cut just slightly inside that line or directly on that line. If you cut directly on it, you'll probably still have to trim a little bit, but I'm going to show you a trick to trimming. Um, but if you um, just cut slightly in the line, I'm going to cut this one up here so I can just cut off the excess paper here. So there's the line. I'm going to take my ruler and put it just slightly inside that line. Okay? You can use the edge of your ruler to line up with the edge of your paper to make sure you're getting it straight. And then I'm just going to cut that. Or maybe not. Cut that piece off. And then I've got my top line cut. And I will just do that all the way around. Now on my curved edges, I'm just going to use my uh, knife here and cut around the edges, but you don't have to use this. You can use this. <laughs> Whatever you feel comfortable using. If you feel better using scissors cutting around just inside that line, which I did, I use, I use my scissors, um, then use your scissors. Uh, but I just wanted to show you a couple of options for cutting out so that, uh, you know, you don't feel like you have to do it any particular way that I'm doing it. You guys, this is this is all. You've got this stuff around your house. Just grab what you have. I don't want you to feel like you have to, you know, go get something specific. You know, if you, if you don't have it, this is where I want you to use your creative intuition and um, just do what you need to do. Now, another, I've, I've cut this whole letter T out here. When I did my R and my A, I traced them on my paper. This is just a piece of scrap paper to show you. And I wanted them to only be this, this tall. So I figured out how tall I wanted them and drew my first line for my height. Okay. Then I put my R on here and I drew and I traced, I think it was my, oh, it was my big, big R over there. And then I traced uh, my lines around the R, would, would be this one. Okay, and then I just stopped where I thought that I stopped that line. Okay, and here as well. And then I put my ruler on here, whatever I just did with it, and made my straight lines. Okay, and that was to cut just the middle section out. And then I came back and did the same thing with my lighter colors. Now, that seems a bit tedious, I must admit. That's the way I did my originals. So when I did this one, I just cut the entire T out, and then I cut my trim pieces that are going to go on top and on bottom. And we can just glue them right on top of this paper. Or you can mark them and cut the blue off and, you know, still glue three different pieces on. Doesn't matter, you're gluing three pieces on no matter what you do, okay? <laughs> 
So just want you to be aware. So I'm going to get the papers glued on this. So is there any questions on how I just did that paper cutting? Because I don't want you to be confused that, you know, you can cut the whole letter out and then cut it down to, you know, for just the middle section or just use the whole letter. I just I didn't want you to be confused by what I was doing here. So if there's confusion, please ask questions. Remember, comments, a question is a comment. That gets you in the the thing for uh, as long as you like and share. All right, so decoupage medium. I use the deco art brand. And everybody does their paper different. Um, I, I'm just going to show you how I do it because that's just worked for me. But if you've watched another artist and they do it a different way and you like the way that they do it or that way works best for you, please do it that way. I've tried it several different ways and this is the way that works best for me. Okay, so um, my decoupage medium that I like to use is the one that's for napkin uh, I like the consistency of this one. I don't have to thin it down. It's made specifically to use with paper type stuff, so it's the one that I like to use. I generally try to use an older brush as well. You know, just in case I don't get all my glue out of my brush. I don't want my brush to be ruined. Okay, so this does have multi-purpose sealer on it. That's good. It's going to help our glue stick on here, and I'm just going to apply a nice, generous, but not soupy, running over. We want to make sure we get, get it on our edges. Our edges are important that we get it on our edges. And I will also be applying this to our paper. And, and, and like I said, this is, is the way, way that I do it. This, this is just the technique that, that over the years has worked best for me. I feel like I have a little bit more time to move my paper around and figure out if I've got it lined up good. I don't worry too much about the lining up because, you know, I'm going to be, uh, we're going to be shading around the edges of these letters when we're done. So... If they're not completely lined up, no big deal. Now I'm going to put paper or uh, the decoupage medium on my paper, a nice good coat of this. I'm not doing a thin coat, but I'm not doing a coat that's runny, you know, that's like piled on. You don't want piled on decoupage because that's going to leave lumps in your um, paper when you go to put it on. All right, so let's just put it on here. I'm going to loosely line it up. to be. See, this way I can still lift it and move it a little bit if I need to. Once I start pushing it on there, though, I'm not going to be able to move it anymore, okay? I'm going to smooth it out. I don't have any bubbles because I didn't get wild and crazy with my decoupage medium, okay? I got a nice, even, not heavy coat, but heavy enough that there is enough to make it stick. Okay, I'm going to have to do some trimming down here, a little bit on this edge. I'll show you a couple ways that you can trim when this is dry. Okay, I want to put these two pieces on. So I'm going to get a nice coat on here. I'm going to put some on my paper through here. And then this one I'll probably have even less time because I'm putting paper on paper. So I'm going to try and line it up as best I can. Press it on there. Paper is going to stick to paper very, very quickly. Paper to wood, you've got a little bit more time as long as you've got... Uh, you know, a decent amount of decoupage medium, but not so much that it is causing bubbles or oozing out everywhere. <laughs> All right, line 
this one up here. All right, I'm going to press that down on there. I'm going to try not to push it because I don't want it to slide up the paper. All right, now I am going to apply a coat of decoupage medium onto the top. And this is going to seal our paper. I'm going to allow this to dry. I might have to uh, force dry it a little bit as we move along here. Uh, but I can show you some other things and start working on the other letters as this one dries, giving this one a little bit of time to completely dry. So we've sealed everything, top, bottom, everything, all layers. If you get any bubbles, I don't know if you can see that. There's some couple, see a couple tiny little ones right there. I'm not going to worry about those. I guarantee when this dries, those are going to disappear. But if they don't, I tend to just take a little straight pin and get a tiny little hole and I take some, some decoupage medium on my finger and I rub it in there and it generally rubs out the bubble. You can rub them out while the, while the decoupage is wet, but just be careful you don't tear your paper. Alright, I think I've got everything covered. This is our sealer for our project, so we don't have to come back and varnish this at all when we're done. So that's a good thing. So I've got to get that dry. Now if you've applied so much decoupage medium that it is oozing off your sides, you do want to clean that up. And you can just clean it up with a um, baby wipe. Alright, well, let me see if I have any questions. Okay, I'm not seeing any questions, so I hope you all got that paper part. Um, so, on your decoupage medium, you do want to wipe the top of your bottle off before you put the lid on, so that you don't your your lid doesn't stick to your bottle. Um, I've had many stick because I've forgotten to wipe that off. So. Alright, get rid of that. Wipe some of this glue off here. And I'm going to set this letter over here to dry while we go over some other stuff here. Okay, some of the elements that I want to show you real quick, um, how I did them. Uh, one is this uh, the stuff here. I've got some made up that we're going to be using uh, on our letters today, but I want to show you a couple ways that you can create these letters. I did, I did use some um, molds, and I did put a link for those on uh, in the description. Uh, these are chain molds. They look like chains. This one's just a decorative mold, but it did have one in here that was kind of cool that I thought sort of resembled a chain. But they're just silicone molds. Okay, I've got quite a few made up and um, these have been in here for a couple of weeks so they are definitely ready to come out. Um, so that This one I actually used on the A. Um, then we've got this kind of more looks like a watch band kind of I get that so you can see the texture in it. Um, it looks more like a watch band, kind of gold band. This looks like a, just a chain, similar to this one. Those two actually look alike. Now this one's a different color because I use a different product. And I wanted to show you, I have holes in this. I shouldn't have holes. <laughs> I should have came back and added more of what I used in there, but it's still going to work just fine. Just fine. So I've got all those. All right. So what I used in these was uh, texture paste is the darker colored ones, and the modeling paste is the lighter colored ones. Okay. And you can also use a glue gun. <laughs> so if you've got a glue gun, that's going to work great. Just completely fill in your area and uh, get it as level as you can uh, with your glue gun. With your modeling paste and your texture paste, 
Now, if you need to shop at DecoArt, I do have a coupon code below. It's good if you haven't used my code yet this year. Um, it's good till June 30th, 20% off of uh, your total order, and you can only use that code one time, but you have to use the link that's above the code, so be sure and use that link. So I just take this and my knife, and I just push it down in there. I've got lots of time to work with this stuff, so I fill it in and then I let it set for a little bit and if it doesn't look full or if it starts getting holes in it like this got holes in it, I come back and put another layer on it. Uh, as you can see, I got busy and did not come back and put another layer on that. But you just fill it up completely and allow it to dry. Now depending on how thick your mold is, will depend on how long it takes to dry. Of course a glue gun is going to dry way faster than modeling paste. But this is very flexible stuff. Get some more on there. Definitely needs a little bit more. And now I'm just taking my palette knife across there and cleaning that up. This all will peel right off of here when it's dry. So even if I got some in that other um, area, it would still come off. So then you just set that aside and let it dry. Um, I generally do mine up a couple of days before uh, I know I'm going to do my project, especially if it's a deep one like this one here is really deep. It might take three, maybe four days to dry um, just because it's so deep. Uh, but like I said, I had these setting for a long time and uh, they were completely dry, as you could see. They were already starting to shrink up. They had uh, been in there so long. So now you've got all these really cool chains to use. This one is actually a piece of this chain right here that you can use on your project. So I just keep some made up because I never know when I'm going to want to add a piece of chain somewhere. This one's a cool looking chain, I think. Lots of different styles of chains here. So you can just pick what, what one you want on your project. Okay, so on my main project, I'm going to try and keep mine as similar to it as possible. I had this particular one, I like to, for you to be able to see the texture in that, on the uh, A. So I'll go ahead and set that one aside for the A. This is what I have on my R, and I have two of these done, uh, plus I have this piece that was left over. I had a couple pieces that was left over from when I did my other one, so I can probably use some of that. And then on my T, I used this one, this braided chain. So I'm going to pull those out so that was in our project, and then these are going to be stored away for another day. And they are kind of flexible. They're flexible making them out of that paste. So um, that's an added bonus if you're wanting to like glue them onto uh, something that's curved or round or something like that. You've got that option there. Okay, I, I do want to paint these up so they can be drying. So these were pretty pretty quick and easy to paint. We're going to use some gold paint here, some 24 karat gold and just a makeup sponge. Nothing fancy here. Nothing fancy. Uh, let's see. Brenda, you said I bought some on Amazon. Lana said she got some from Michaels. What okay, what what did I get from Michaels? I don't even know what I said. Oh man, I got I got that paint all over me. Oh, shoot. <laughs> My bottle felt empty, but it wasn't. Goodness gracious. That's a lot of paint there. All right. Well, let me take a minute to clean up my mess. Mess up my bottle. This is why I buy baby wipes by the cases at Sam's. Because I'm messy. All right. Makeup sponge. Oh, here it is. Oh, my gosh. Okay. 
So I'm just going to take my gold. Now you could go ahead and paint these like yellow first. Um, if they seem too transparent, uh, you can paint them uh, with yellow. You can obviously use a brush, but you know I just wanted something I could you know cut off and throw away. So um, I may have used yellow on here first because those are so much darker than this. So this doesn't act like it wants to squirt out anything. This is going to be a messy project, I can tell already. The molds. Oh, the molds I got from Amazon, and I did put a link for those. I did put a link. So we're going to paint these up and get these so they're dry so we can glue them on. They don't get glued on until close to the end, but we want them to be dry. So I have to grab me a brush and just paint them up with a brush. I could stick these down with some glue dots so, <laughs> so that they're not so um, um, movie, so they don't move so much. So just paint them up with some, some kind of, or you could use silver if you prefer silver chain, you know, or rose gold chain, or whatever kind of chain that you want to have. So just paint them up, or try to paint them up. I just need a little bit of yellow underneath that gold. And then I'm going to come back with the gold. Yeah, I like to fill in all of my little areas in here. I did do my other ones with a makeup sponge, but I was taking more time and, you know, just kind of having fun with it but with this today I just want to I want to be able to get every step done for you so I'm going to use a brush and go a little bit faster may not be perfect but and you can use your heat heat tool to set all this stuff of course I might have to touch these up after I get them on because I like to get the paint down inside all them little holes. Really make it look like a chain. Alright. Do you have to do anything special to the glue gun chain for the paint to stick? Uh, you want to paint it with acrylic paint first, but you could put the multi-purpose sealer on it um, first, or if you have some paint adhesion medium, which is also a deco art product, you could put a coat of that on there first. Both, either one of those is going to make the paint stick. So if you start painting the glue and it doesn't seem like the paint is sticking to it, I mean the acrylic paint really should stick to it, but um, if it feels, it seems like it's not sticking, then I would stop and get some kind of um, multi-purpose sealer or something, even if you just have a matte uh, or an ultra matte varnish, uh, you could put that on there. Something to just seal the glue so that the paint will stick to it. You could use quick wood to make the chains as well. Um, the only thing with the molds, I'm not sure about quick wood because quick wood is, is made to stick to anything. So you would have to form it in the mold and then take it out to dry because if it dried in the mold, I think it would become adhered to the mold because uh, it, it will stick to whatever whatever you put it on even even while before it dries it will it will stick to it. All right, now that I have a huge mess here, go to this side. Make sure I got my chains. I'll be cutting them just with scissors when I cut my lengths here, so I will have to touch up the ends um, when I get to that point. So these we're going to set aside so that they can dry. I'm not going to take that gold paint too far away. Actually, I'll just bring in the other element that has to be yellow as well um, and gold so that we can paint right here on this messy paper. Okay, so um, the other element that is uh, gold, um, Don 
you loved your mystery box. Oh, thank you so much. I felt like I put a lot of good stuff in them. All right. Um, the, these bees that I put on mine were from Sandy McTeer. Uh, this is an eight-piece set. It's uh, bees and honeycomb chipboard. These are very, very thin. They're very delicate, but they are so beautiful. So I'm going to use the bees. I, I used three on my other one, but you can use anything that you have. Um, if you have a chipboard yourself that you can cut out, you can stamp it with something and cut it out. You can use plastic pieces, you know, that you buy buttons and things like that. So um, this is where I want you to just... I really want you to search your home and find the things that you like that you want to put on your letters so that, you know, your letters are you. <laughs> All right, so we're going to paint the bees. We're going to paint them yellow, and then we are going to bling them up. Uh, I don't believe I put gold paint on these. I just put this yellow color. I did a couple of coats, and um, then I put glitter on it, glitter on them. So I'm going to dry this coat real quick with my heat tool. See if I have any questions here. By the time we get ready to use these, they'll be dry. That one's getting pretty dry already. Second quick little coat on here. And we're going to make up some glitter for these. Ooh, okay. I'm giving my, my letter T plenty of time to dry so that by the time we've got these other elements ready to go, um, we're going to be good. Okay, so I'm going to use the Glamour Dust um, Gold. But any glitter that you have, I mean, I have so much glitter and so many colors, and so many brands, whatever you have. I mean, just whatever you have. If you just have clear glitter, that will work just fine. And I'm going to mix my uh, own little glitter stuff here with some... I'm going to use high gloss varnish, but you could use just... You know, gloss, which is not quite as shiny as this. This is one of the only glosses, <laughs> varnishes, that you can actually shake to get it mixed. Varnish in a can, you have to stir, and you have to stir not real fast so you don't get a lot of bubbles in it because the bubbles in canned varnish is much harder to get out than. Uh, the bubbles in this kind of varnish and I've never figured out what the difference between them is but that's the case. All right I'm put my gold glitter in here. Ooh yeah baby. Love me some bling bling bling. So pretty. Stir that in there. Mm-mm-mm gorgeous stuff. Right. I'm going to cut off the end of my sponge here. And then I'm going to go into my glitter and tap that onto my bees. Get them all blinged up. So pretty. I'm going to move them out of the place that I'm painting them so they don't stick. They shouldn't stick to this paper. This is the paper I have them laying on is the backing off of um, labels. It's kind of like freezer paper so it shouldn't stick to them. None of this stuff should stick to them. That's what I like about this paper. And then we'll put some on this one. Look at them bees. Aren't they gorgeous? Whew. Love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. that out of there, that over there, 
Now let them dry. If it looks like they need more, then add more. You can never have too much bling. That's my motto. You can never have too much bling. Bling them up. Okay. All right, let's see what else do we need. I don't think we need to paint anything else. So we're ready to start uh, putting all the stuff on our on our uh, letters. So I'm going to try and move this. Maybe I should put my bees over here on the plate because I just have a feeling they're going to slide into that paint. <laughs> Computer just made a noise. I think it's the recording part of my program that records to my computer. It sometimes just doesn't do what it's supposed to do. All right, set all this aside. Let it finish drying because we'll be using it at the end. Well, close to the end. All right, letters, letters, letters. My T feels pretty dry. Um, let me show you real quick if you need to um, clean off your edges or trim your paper. This is still just slightly wet. I don't think I have any on my R or my A. Maybe I have a little spot here on my R. There's a couple ways that you can clean your um, excess paper off okay so one of them is to take your cutting mat you can lay your letter on your self-healing mat and take your blade I like this super super thin blade here um, because I uh, you know, it's thin. I can get right next to my wood. And you can just trim it off like that. If you've got straight straight edges, that's the way to go. On your curved edges, they're a little bit trickier. And that's still slightly wet, so I'm not going to do that one. Uh, on your curved edges, you can still trim them that way, or you can just take some water and put on that paper. I guarantee the edges of your paper are not going to have as much glue as the rest of your paper. And then you're just going to take this a little sanding file, just a little one out of a package. I have just a package of these and I just pull them out and use them. You can buy them anywhere. <laughs> and then I just tend to sand it downwards until that paper comes off of there. And that's actually glue, not paper, so that's not coming off. But that is the easiest way to get um, your letters um, sanded, or removed off of curved places. Now, my paper is showing some white because the color doesn't go all the way through. Don't worry about that because we're going to be shading the edges. So that's a couple of ways that you can get your paper trimmed off. I'm not going to trim off all my tea because it's still just slightly damp and I don't want to um, damage that paper uh, since it's not 100% dry. All right, let's start adding some stuff on here. I'm just going to use the same uh, stamps that I used on my previous one so that I can keep it as similar to it as possible. I'm going to be using Stays On uh, Jet Black. I don't know which one of these actually is full of ink, so I'll give it a shot. Alright, so on my um, tea, I used a dragonfly. I used this dragonfly, which um, I used to sell on my website. I don't know if I have any left. The Stamp Pinnace one. If you have one, great. If you don't, use whatever, you know, if you've got a butterfly stamp or a bee stamp, and get out of package. Oh my gosh, that's, that's really stuck. <laughs> I mean, it is seriously stuck. There we go. Good. 
Good grief. What a struggle. We're going to stamp the dragonfly up here. And then, and these stamps, these three stamps here, I got these all at Hobby Lobby. So, um, I don't know if they still carry these because I don't know how long I've had. I'm pretty sure I still saw this particular one in there the other day. Um, I have actually two sets of those, so I might put those in a mystery box or something. Okay, and I'm going to use this one. So, that one will go in there. And then on my A, I'm going to use one of these, which I should do my A first and give this letter a little bit more time to dry. Um, I'm going to use my Daisy one, which this also came from Hobby Lobby, and I don't know how long I've had it. Stampabilities. All right, so let me show you a little trick because these kind of are more better stamps. <laughs> um, so I stamp them on paper and then I just cut them out so I would have the pieces you know, so I could make my flowers more layered with actually being too much on top of each other. So let's get this stamped up. I'll figure out where we want our first flower to be. This kind of feels like it might be the dry one. I could be wrong. Oh yeah, this one. This one's definitely the one I think. I need to fill that up. up. Okay, so um, I want a uh, flower coming over here, but I don't want it to be, I don't want it to get on my part down here. So I'm going to block it off. You probably want to block it off with a piece of paper. And I'm going to, I'm going to place it here and put my stamp here. And so I've got one flower on there. So now I want to block my flower so I don't stamp on it again with the one that I cut out. And I'll put one up here. Okay. And then I want to put one over here. So I'm going to put that back on there. I just want the... Um, top of the flower here, down here, well, maybe a little bit of the leaf, whatever ends up being on it will be fine. I didn't get all my flower petals, but it's okay. And then I'm just going to clean this off, because I'm done with it, set it aside to dry, and wipe my ink off of this. Okay, so that one is stamped. So it's ready for us to add. Well, no, it's not ready. We've got to put a stamp up here. Let's see, which one did I use? I used... Oh, it looks like this one here. But, you know, you can use whatever one you want. So I will need my flower back on there so I don't stamp this over the flower. So I'll put my flower back on here and maybe this one on here just in case. So I've got those covered up and we'll put some ink on here. Maybe. However you want it to go, it's your it's your letter. It doesn't have to be exactly like mine. I'm only trying to make it as close to my first one, so it's not too confusing. Okay, so that one we're done with. Clean this stamp off. And we're ready to go to the next letter. Okay, our R has this stamp on it. See if I have any questions. Right. And this is also one that I believe I got at Walmart, or not Walmart, Hobby Lobby. And I'm going to use this. Let's see which one. Yeah, this is the one I used on here. 
It's got these butterflies and these flowers. Some kind of weird flower. I don't know what kind of flower they are. Oh, and I did use the butterfly up on the top. So I know we all have stamps galore. <laughs> so, you know, use what stamps that you have that you like. All right, so I'm going to put this one down here. Make sure I get lots of ink on this one because this purple is darker, so it's a little bit harder to see. So I really want a lot of the, a couple of rows of that kind of diamond shape there to show up. Place it on there. Oh, pretty. Pretty, pretty, pretty. I'm going to do the other side as well. And then up on the top, I'm going to wipe this off because I want to do just a, um, butterfly up, a small butterfly up here. I did a couple of butterflies on my other one, but I'm going to try to just ink this butterfly right here. If I ink something else, I'm not worried about it. Butterfly up here, and I had part of a butterfly coming off over here, so I'm just using the very corner of my sponge and just inking that butterfly. And we'll put a little piece of a butterfly coming over here, and then I'm going to use the big butterfly on this one. Now these letters are a little bit shorter, um, I think an inch and a half shorter than the original ones that I used. It. My original letters were at nine and a half inches. Okay. All right, so now we've just got our T. I think it's dry enough for us to put some stuff on it now. So my dragonfly, my dragonfly is going to be up at the top. Now we're going to get this dragonfly on before we turn this blue paper green. Stays on ink is good ink because uh, when we start adding paint and stuff, it won't smear our ink. All right, so the dragonfly is on. We got one more stamp to do on this one, I think. I, th I think I, this is the only one I did down at the bottom here. And then we're ready to start all of our pretty stuff on here. So pretty. Alright. We're done with our inking. Well, for now. We may have to when we add glitter on some of these, it may um, take down the inking a little bit, so we can come back and ink on top of the glitter uh, once we get it done. All right, let's start adding some bling on here. I'm going to try and get you in a little closer doing this stuff. So we'll do one letter at a time. Okay, so I just used um, glitter and my varnish 
to make me some paint to put on here. If you have um, um, Glamour Dust, Ice Crystal, and Assorted Colors, then you can certainly use that. Okay, so on my A, I put uh, this pink in my varnish. Gorgeous pink, and uh, this one is actually a Martha Stewart color. Sugar, sugar, sugar light, sugar light. But I've had my glitters for so many years. She may not even make that color anymore, or she may not even make glitter. I don't know. It's been so long since I went shopping for any kind of craft supplies because I feel like I'm overwhelmingly uh, good in that area. <laughs> but I don't even know what's out there anymore. All right, I'm gonna grab me a brush, and I'm going to. Uh, I would suggest using a round brush here, but I just grabbed a flat brush, and because this has varnish in it, it's going to be a little slick. So, I applied a couple of coats just in my petals. Of this color. Um, I didn't add any bling on those little black dots there, but they could certainly have some kind of bling bling on them. So I say just use whatever colors depending on your paper that you're using, something that will look fabulous with your papers. Okay, I didn't use pink anywhere else. I'm going to go over and actually wash this color, uh, wash a color onto this blue paper um, while that dries. So, um, I wanted green paper but I couldn't find a color of green paper that I liked. So I grabbed my media fluids. You can also use just acrylic paints if you use like a, a bright transparent green, uh, a couple of bright transparent green, one, one that's a little more on the greenish yellow and one that's just like green, like festive green and citron green or something like that. And I'm just going to create, mix these and create a little wash. You just need a tiny little dot of this paint. And my little brush. And I'm just going to add some water in here. And create, create this little wash of color. With this green. And I'm just going to go over here to my paper. I think it needs to be a little more water in it. And I'm just going to paint my blue paper. I'm not going to paint where the dragonfly is, though. So I can make this bright green. I'm going to paint around the dragonfly. So this is just a wash of color. need more water. I'm not going to worry about getting on my white paper there because I'm going to put that gold trim on there but I want my paper to be green but I want my dragonfly wings to have that blue underneath them so how fun is that you can do two coats if you want to you know really get that bright 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 green on here super bright. This will dry fairly quickly because this is just a wash of color. I'm just going back with a quick second layer on here. A little more water here. And it's okay if you still see some of that blue peeking through. Don't, 
I mean, if you're if you're using a blue similar to my, to mine, and um, you see some of that blue coming through, that's okay. Okay, I'm gonna put that letter up there to get dry. We're gonna go to this one, and we're gonna make some purple. And I've already got my varnishes out here. Again, I don't have any idea what brand this is. It's just. Let's see, I did, actually I did clear and green, so purple is for the dragonfly. I'll just go ahead and mix that and put it on the dragonfly wings. I'm not mixing a whole lot here, just a little bit, you know, just do a little bit at a time. And I did do a couple layers, I think I need to add a little more purple into this, it's not quite purpley enough. I'll go ahead and do a little bit on the body there. And let's see, did I do the eyes? I did the eyes with, oh, I did the eyes and the body with green, actually. So let's make up some green. And I have a couple of greens here. I think I may have mixed these together. This one's more of an olive -y type green. It's also a Martha Stewart Helidor, I guess, is the name. I don't know. Mix some of this green in it. The more glitter you put in, the better it's going to show up. So, I'm just putting a little bit in there. I'll go ahead and put some on the body here. I want it to be green, and the eyes, I'm actually going to go to my round brush, because this one is, I think I need more glitter in there, it's still too clear, I want it to look like a color, not like clear varnish. And you do, when you're painting this on, you do have to almost like lay it on there. Want some more of this darker green now? Okay, that's just taking way too long. No, oh, it's because the bottle's empty. The bottle is empty. So for what's on the sides of it. This green is going to go on my, I don't know what these are, these little flower things here. Um, definitely takes a couple of coats to get it to show up on this black, but I don't know what kind of flowers those are. And then I'll go over here and put some green on my leaves. I'm just using these transparent colors because I just thought they were so pretty on here. Okay, anything else have green? The butterflies have, oh yeah, these, these things over here have green. <laughs> these things, I wanted to bling up some of the leaves on here. So I really scoop it up on my round brush and then just skim it across those leaves and it just kind of sticks to the paper. And you do not have to come in and do any varnishing at the end. These are already sealed so you don't have to worry about that. All right, let me get some clear made up real quick somewhere. And you can you can use the Glamour Dust uh, crystal or just any kind of clear that you have. Or you could just go straight into the Glamour Dust Ice Crystal and just add a little bit more glitter to it if you want it more blingy. Oh. So pretty. 
All right, so this is going on the butterflies. I'm gonna glitter them up. If you're not a glitter kind of person, then you don't have to glitter up your anything. You can do as much or as little as you want on your projects. I'll probably just do one layer of glitter on the butterflies because I put quite a bit in that varnish. One piece of a butterfly here. And we got a wing here. And a little one here. Okay. And then I did clear in the center of the flowers here. And I did do clear on the wings on top of that purple. Oop. Put you down where you can see it. I'm just adding a layer of the, the clear on here. Oh, that's so pretty. So gorgeous. All right, let me see where else I did. I got to get a second coat on the pink flowers and the green ones, and then I will dry those. So let's go to our pink here and see if we got enough here to add a second coat on here. I'm not making these perfect, you, you know, I'm just kind of putting some color in there. I'm trying to stay within my petal shapes, but still just not overwhelming the flower. I know in the light it looks like it's completely full, but let me hold it up and you can kind of, you can still see all those lines on there. Okay. All right, and our green one, which is not got much left, we'll work it out and paint these. The second coat. Let's see if we got any leaves over here we want to put a little bit more on. We're pretty good. Let me do the, the body. I need the second layer of the green on here. Okay. I think those look pretty good. I'm going to dry those really quick so we can move on and get some finishing touches on here. So with the varnish, it does take a little bit longer for it to dry, so I'll probably just, you know, get it as dry as I can to start adding some wet paint on here without removing the glitter. Um, you know, but give yours time to dry. That, that uh, glitter in there makes everything a little bit thicker. But how fun is this? Okay, so we're going to probably glue on our gold areas, or our chains next. And then we have to shade around all the edges, and I shaded around um, some of the elements to make them pop forward. And then we'll put our bees on. It's not an overly difficult project. It's just that if you're using, you know, different colors and stuff like I'm using, you know, it might take a minute. So don't uh, rush yourself on it. Just take your time and, and have as much fun with it as uh, you can. Okay, let's get our chains in here. Okay, so this one is going to go on one. My glue is hot. This one's going to go over here, and so this piece is long enough that I can cut this one. And I still have a piece over there. It's not enough for two areas up here. So what I do is I, if I if I want that long piece on there, I leave it. If not, I line it up uh, to where I want it, and then I mark it. Where I want to cut 
cut it. And then I take my scissors and I cut on that mark I just made. So there's a piece that's going to go right there, and then this one I could actually use right here. Right there. Okay. I need another, I need another layer of gold on my paint. On my uh, chain, actually, this chain can go all the way across. So let me mark this one. My other one, my my tip of my R was up higher than the uh, than the rest of it. You know, I cut that little tail thing off there. So this stuff just cuts with scissors. Very easy. Okay, where's my mark? I think that's it. I will have to paint the ends so that they're not white. Still a little long there. Because that's curved, I'm going to have to make two marks. I'm going to have to make one here and one here. And then curve up to that mark. And that should get that. Okay, then up here. This is another curved one. On my bigger letters, I didn't have to worry about the curves because uh, my paper ended up being on a straight, a straight edge, not a curved edge. So you just mark the top and the bottom of that curve so that you can see it. Okay, that one's got its stuff cut for it. So let's go over here to this. This one, actually, I need to draw from the back because it's curved and it's angled. So I'll mark that and then I will cut on those lines. See if I can cut a curve here. the same on this. I'll, I'll hold it on here and flip it over cause, just because my glitter's not dry. If it was dry, I'd just lay it upside down and, and uh, cut it off. And then I'll cut on the line. Either cut right on it or just to the inside of it, just like we did on the paper. Okay, and then I've got one more up here. Hold it, flip it over, and mark it. Mark this side. Okay, we've got the three pieces for that one. So let's go to this one and get our pieces cut for it. And I use the braided, kind of braided type chain on this one. So hopefully there will be enough for all of this. This one's a straight cut. mark because it's curved. Again, if your glitter's dry, it's much easier because you can just flip it over. But because I'm moving on without my glitter being 
100% dry. Okay, I hope I cut that right. Just a straight cut here. And they do need that second layer of gold. It just, they're not quite as blingy as what I would like. But uh, I will just do that after afterwards and get that second coat on there. But you would have plenty of time to get your second coat on. These are all just going to be hot glued on and they will set immediately when you put them on there so uh, just be aware of that. Okay. Hot glue. I'll, I'll come, come back, back and paint, paint the edges of it when I put my second coat on here. So I mean, they, you, you cannot move these letters once you once you stick them down, or not letters. These um, these little glue thing, these things we're gluing on. Once you stick it on there, it's on there. So you want to be aware of how much pa each paper that you're covering there. Make sure we get lined up good. And you can use you know, fabric binding or any kind of stuff that you find in the craft section. You know, it doesn't have to be this type of stuff. I just wanted you to see lots of options that you could do and start playing around with some, maybe some products you've never used before and uh, just kind of have some fun with everything. This one's all gold already because it's from my a piece from my other one that I did that I had left over, so it's pretty shiny already. I'm just making hot glue strings everywhere. Goodness. Okay, that one's all glued on. Let's go to the R, or the T. I <laughs> don't even know my letters, man. Okay, that's hot. <laughs> that's hot. Uh, hot, hot, hot. Okay, don't do what I just did. <laughs> Flipped it over right on my finger. Hot stuff, man. Okay. Oh, you're going to do your granddaughter's name. That That's a cool idea. I, I actually initially thought about doing my grandson's names, but I had these letters, so I thought, well, I'll just, I'll just do them. I'll just do these letters. I would do really, really fun papers for my grandsons, probably. All right, one more. Okay, before we add the bees and the jewels on here, we want to get some shading done on our letters. So I'm going to get some of the stringy glue off of me. Okay, so I, I will go back and put more gold on my letters. Um, so, uh, shading. Okay, <laughs> forgot what I was doing. All right. Um, the color I need is black. 
Now, if you paint your sides and your back a different color besides black, because they can be any color that you want them to be, you might want to use a color, so if you paint them brown, use the brown to shade. Um, if you paint them like a bright blue or something, use your blue with just a little bit, just a little bit of black in it so that you can get a shading color out of your base color. Okay? So I'm just going to maybe see if I can do it with this little, little bitty brush here. I'm going to use this one just around my elements. So on mine, I wanted things to kind of stand out a little bit more. So I did a little bit of shading around my flowers. Just make sure your glitter is dry. My glitter is not dry. <laughs> so I want to try and stay out of it. I mean, it's not 100% dry. It's, it's, it's kind of dry. So I want to, you know, lift those and not make them quite so flat looking. Um, so in order to the, do that you have to shade a little bit around them and I'm just using a little wash of black here. Try and stay off that leaf because it's probably not dry. Well, it's probably dry enough I could get my damp brush in it. And so just go around your elements and just lift them up a little bit. Um, I did not go around my stems here. Just put a little bit of black in them to make them appear a little bit more. But I did um, go around these. I'll show you how on this one, but I really need to um, paint those another layer of gold on there. I did above and below all of these here. Now when I did my other letters that just have the paper on them, they don't have you know these raised things on them, um, I did not shade to separate my papers. I just did around, do anything to separate where the light color was and the main color was. Okay, so we'll do a little bit to separate these, a little bit of shading. I'm not going to do that one because it's so close. And then we have to finish out our letters. Uh, shading on our letters with, uh, I'm going to get a bigger brush now. I don't need quite that much water. I'm making a wash of this black because that's the color that's on my sides and my back still have too much water here. Too much water. And we'll go around all the edges everywhere. I'm going to try to stay out of my glitter. I'll come back to those. But all of your edges will get shaded with black and this will help cover up any um, edges that are cut a little short or um, you know where it didn't where the paper was rough where you um, maybe cut it and the white that's you know in the paper is showing through kind of like on my R where you can see a little bit of that white showing through there so we want to shade around all of our letters Okay, that feels dry enough. I think I can paint over that glitter now. Just gonna paint all the way up. I'm using a fairly big brush here. Because I like for my floats to be very washy around the edges, but still very, I don't know, kind of messy. I, I don't I don't want it to look perfect. If you want yours to look perfect, then you you go for that look. But um, I'm kind of I kind of like it to be more I don't know, just different. Okay, so the A's kind of got a little bit of floating around it. If your float's really light, you can come back and do it again, but uh, it's given a little bit of dimension on there. I think I think I need to do mine a 
second time. I feel like my my wash is a little light. Could be a little darker. And this brush just really is holding the paint. Let me tell you, I've got my old brush that I used the uh, for the glue. I should be getting my better brushes here to do this. Okay, so these ones that are different shaped, you just kind of want to go around it, you know, within its shape, so you're, you're going around the whole thing. And like I said, if you get too much, I'm not going to worry about getting on my gold since i got to come back and put another coat of paint on it. If you, um, I forgot where I was going with my thought process there. Oh, if you get too much glitter, like on your butterflies or whatever, you can't quite see them. If you're using stamps like I use, where you put it on a clear thing, you can stamp right back over it. My butterflies on my original one, I got too much glitter on them, and then I couldn't see all those detail lines from the stamp. So when the glitter was dry, I came back and... Um, stamped back over the glitter with my butterfly stamp so I could see all those uh, line, those detail lines for my butterfly. And, you know, th this is a, a step you really don't want to not do because it makes your letters look more raised and more dimensional. So... Make sure you shade. see on this edge, I can still see the white paper, so I'm just going to take some black paint and cover that up with some black paint so it blends into the edge. I get too much paint, then I get too much water, and it's just one of those vicious little circles. But this would be something you, you want to do right before you glue on your jewels and your bees. Just stayed with my little brush here. All right, as messy as that R is, I'm gonna I'm gonna leave that one and do a second layer after. Later, I'll do a second layer on there. I'll go ahead and put my bees on. I think I can paint around my bees. Too much in the middle there. Covering up all my green. All that beautiful green. Yeah, I could not find a green paper that I liked. Um, and I was originally going to leave it blue, but after I got it on there, I'm like, I already got a blue letter. I really want a green letter. <laughs> so, problem solved with a little bit of paint. I'm really doing a messy job here, guys. Strings from the glue on here still. It's going to look much better if you take your time doing it. Don't be rushing it like me. Okay, I'm going to go around my dragonfly because I really want him to pop off of here. I got paint too far over in my brush. Let's see, I did around his body and just under his wings. Oh, that looks so good. Alright, just finish this one up. And 
to take your time. Don't don't rush like me. Too much. Too much in there. Edge. I'm going to dry this real quick, although it does need a second coat on its edges, and I'm not going to worry about it because i, I got to come back and put second coats on the gold. I want to dry it so we can put our bees in our, our um, jewels on. These two are probably already dry, but they do, they do need that darker shading along the outside. It just really helps a lot. Don't rush and use a better brush than what I was using. I was using my yucky old brush that I use for my glue, so don't do that. Okay, jewels. This is where you can choose what you want to do. If you want to use colored jewels, um, or if you want to use just clear jewels. Um, just saw that you were on. Sorry I'm late. <laughs> yeah, you'll have to watch the replay. We're, we're getting close to being done here. Um, okay, so these are uh, sticky, sticky jewels. They already have the sticky on them. And, and they're pretty good jewels, but they're they're probably not going to stay for the long haul. You know, um, uh, my daughter-in-law gave me something and she put the grandkids' names on it and she put jewels on it. And every day I'd come in and see two or three on the floor where they'd fallen off. So, you know, these may not stay for the long haul, but they are certainly some that you can use. You could probably add uh, hot glue on the back of these, you know, as well. Um, and then these are just your standard little you know, assorted color jewels. I think I got these at Michael's. I'm not 100% sure. Um, I the plate to dump them out on here. So for this one, I put some blue ones, some really light blue ones on there, but you could do clear. You could leave this step completely off, but I just really felt like it kind of dressed them up a little bit. So I'll be gluing some blue ones on the tops of my flowers. And on these green ones here, I just did um, three of them um, with this like emerald color little stone. And they would look good if all of them were clear. Um, and then I used some like orangey yellow type colors over here and make like the look of little flowers. I don't know. Just let's see where did I put one close to the bottom. But like I said, you could use clear on all of these and just um, do clear ones. Put them wherever you want. I thought about putting like two at the bottom of the wings and you know, I had all different, you know, these little dots here. I thought, well, I could put some jewels on the dots. Actually, these, because they're assorted sizes, would probably look cute on those dots right there. Um, but I didn't have assorted sizes in this little container that I bought, so I didn't, I didn't do that. So let me find my bees. Put them over here. And these are going to be put on with some glue dots. Don't those bees look so pretty? Oh my gosh. I love those. So pretty. Alright, let's glue some little dots on here and I'm going to put the glue on my piece instead of on that little dot because I know for sure I will burn myself. And you don't have to varnish this when it's done. I know I said that a couple times, but I just want to make sure you know. You don't have to varnish this. You got varnish in all your glitter, and we sealed the paper, so really the only thing that's not got varnish on it is your shading that you're doing around the piece, but, you know, we don't need that to have any, you know, brightness to it, because it's the, it's the shading part. And then our gold, that gold paint has quite a bit of shine to it, so we don't have to 
do anything with that. It's been so long since I've done a uh, mixed media project like this that's this involved. And I had so much fun making these. Okay, my um, bees, I'm going to stick on with some glue dots. I've probably had these glue dots for 20 years. I don't know. It's got little bitty ones over here and big ones on this side. And I'm going to use some little bitty ones and put on my bees. I got a lot of thing, elements that I still got to finish on this. You know, the shading, the gold. You know, may add another layer of bling bling. Now these letters are smaller than my other letters, so you know you just kind of have to figure out where you want to put your bees on them. Um, I'm still going to go up here with one here. on my uh, uh, R on my other one, the butterfly that was here, I didn't like the butterfly. It looked terrible when I got done, so I covered it up with the B. I kind of like that uh, butterfly there, but so I'm going to move my B up just a little bit there. So you can still see that little bit of butterfly. And then this one over here, I had stuck the B up on the top, but that's not as wide as my other um, other one. I can still stick it up at the top, just move it over a little bit, I think. So, I've got to get my shading done again and more gold on my bands, but I'm going to wide angle out so I can bring my original set in here. I don't know if I can get them both, both on camera, but we'll try. A, A, R, R, and then my T. And these are a little bit thicker. The ones I got at Walmart are a little bit thicker. I'm zoomed out as far as I can go. So we can kind of see them there. And how they look. Make me a little bit smaller. You can see the T a little bit better. So pretty! Love, love, love. I love the green on this one. So pretty. So, you know, as soon as I get my gold blinged up a little bit more and my second layer of shading on here, plus uh, I need to shade around these flowers, like I did this flower, these flowers, and the dragonfly, I need to shade around these, and I shaded around this big, big butterfly here so it could kind of pop off of the uh, paper as well. So that... That is it, you guys. Do the glue dots hold for a while? Um, these glue dots, I don't know. These glue dots I've had forever and a day. Um, I've never had them come off of anything, so I guess it depends on the quality of the glue dot. These are Recollections glue dots, but like I said, they're probably 20 years old. 15 at least. And Because um, I haven't done scrapbooking in a long, long time. But I did keep some of my scrapbooking things that I knew I might use uh, on some painted projects. Very springy. Oh, you feel better now, Donna. That's awesome. That's awesome. All right. So if any of you that came in late, I'm giving away, starting giveaway stuff on my lives. But in order to be in the drawing, you have to like, comment, and share. And uh, the giveaway for today is um, some Dynasty brushes. So I've got a lot of good, really nice things to give away to you guys to show you my appreciation for you being here on my lives and for subscribing and supporting me. And uh, I just want to give back. I mean, this is giving back, showing you how to do this stuff. But I really want to give back. So... I will be doing some drawings and uh, giving stuff away, and hopefully you will be a winner. 
So be sure to like, comment, and share, and please subscribe, you guys. Please subscribe if you're watching on my YouTube channel. Even if you're not on my YouTube channel, go to YouTube and subscribe. <laughs> so, all right, let's see. Do we have any other questions? All right, Shannon. I can't wait to do my letters I picked up from Michael's this week. Oh, you got some from Michael's. I... I think I checked at my Michael. Yeah, my Michaels didn't have this particular font. They had other fonts. And, uh, you know, they, could, they can be whatever font you want them to be. They don't have to be this particular one. Um, but I wanted them to match as close as I could because these were the ones that I painted and I wanted to paint very similar ones. Thank you, Sharita. Okay. Do I have any other questions? Let me look back through. Could you glue the bees on, or do you want them to start up with the dots? You mean stand up with the dots? You can glue the bees on. That totally uh, is an option for you. I wanted them raised off of there. Um, I didn't want them to be flat on the on the uh, letter, so that's why I use the glue dots. But you certainly can um, just glue them on, you know, with some hot glue, or even you know, just regular white glue would hold them on there. So yeah, you can you can certainly do that. All right, I'm checking for any other questions. Okay. Okay. I don't see any questions on Facebook. Let me scroll back through on. YouTube feed here and make sure do you have to do anything special to the glue gun chain for the paint to stick oh I think somebody already asked me that no they asked me if I if I did them out of glue I didn't do anything special to these that were made out of the out of the texture paste and the the um, modeling paste I just painted right on them um, because they took the paint very, very well. But I think somebody asked me about if you used hot glue, then you could, uh, you would probably want to, you could try painting that. Personally, I think the paint should stick to the glue just fine. But if it, you find that it's not sticking to it, you need to seal that hot glue with something like um, a multi-purpose sealer, a matte varnish, or um, even some bonding primer like um, Deco Art has the um, paint adhesion medium because it will make the paint stick to anything. So try that. Um, okay, I don't see any other questions. I think that's it. I think that's it, you guys. So I've enjoyed this one a lot. I'm glad you guys stayed here for the haul and uh, uh, watch me sort of complete this. Uh, but I will get it, it completed with its gold and its shading um, because this will either be sold on my website or end up in a mystery box. I don't know yet. <laughs> so, <laughs> all right, you guys. It, uh, thank you so much for being here with me today. Let me make myself a little bit bigger. All right, I hope you guys are going to have a great, fun, wonderful remainder of your day. I hope you have beautiful weather and can get out and enjoy it. And if not, I hope you find something inside that uh, sparks your creativity and gets you going to uh, do something creative with the rest of your day. Uh, that is my goal, to get the creative flowing in you so that uh, you can just sit down and have fun. All right, you guys, uh, I will not have a live next week because next Wednesday is our anniversary, our 43rd, <laughs> I think. I think it's our 43rd. I'm not going to swear to that, but somewhere around that year. Um, so we're going to spend the day out uh, going to some flea markets and then going out to a wonderful dinner at our favorite place and... So I won't have a live next week, but uh, be watching for the one the week after, um, which may be moved to Thursday because I have a meeting on Wednesday. I'm not sure I can get the live done in time, but I will try. So uh, we'll see. Just be watching for that post on when it will be. I don't even know what it's going to be yet, so <laughs> I don't know how long it's going to take. 
But that's it for me, you guys. I appreciate you all. Please subscribe, and um, I will see you on the next one. And I can't wait to see who wins the drawing, you guys. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.